Okay, welcome to this video here for Material Science 410. We'll be looking at atomic force microscopy and its fundamentals. So AFM is part of a scanning probe technique um, related to uh, scanning tunneling microscopy. Uh, this, the STM, scanning tunneling microscopy, was invented in 1981 by Benning and Rower. And the first AFM followed shortly thereafter was fabricated in 1985. And the architecture was uh, fairly effective, and, but rudimentary for the early stages. And this involved the simple gluing of tiny shards of diamond, which had uh, an atomically sharp kind of point to, to the diamond. And this was added to the end of a small strip of gold foil to make up the stylus used for imaging. Modern um, tips uh, are now fabricated by silicon or silicon nitride using lithography and etching techniques. And the price has dropped dramatically over the years since 1985. And now each AFM tip uh, is on the order of $20 per tip. Here you can see um, one of these uh, silicon based cantilevers okay so we'll see the long cantilever here which is often oscillated up and down for for uh, interaction with the surface so the sample would be down below and all of its topography could be studied and we have an atomically sharp tip here uh, typically made by etching or other um, kind of uh, fabrication approaches to give us that sharp tip uh, Further inspection of the sort of tip area, so the sort of area here <coughs> is shown, and you can see that these tips can get very, very sharp with um, radius, radii of curvature for the point uh, below 10 nanometers often. So just to contrast the two microscopes that we've talked about at this point, we have the scanning tunneling uh, microscope. <clears throat> Here, uh, piezoelectric quartz type materials are used for positioning the tip over top of the sample. The sample needs to be grounded so that um, current associated with the transfer of electrons from the tip into the conducting sample uh, can occur. So this sample must be conducting for the technique to work. And an inspection of sort of the atomic level uh, interaction zone is shown here, where you can see that electron transfer would occur from the tip uh, to the surface or vice versa as the distance between the two approaches uh, the sort of nanometer scale. This allows for tunneling, tunneling of electrons across that gap and the registration of current, which becomes the uh, mode for signaling and mapping of that surface of the conducting sample. In AFM, uh, we benefit in that we do not need a conducting surface, so we can uh, position any material, insulating, uh, semiconductor, or conducting as our, as our sample here. And um, various architectures exist in the diagram here. The piezoelectric scanners that are used to help with uh, rastering the surface uh, beneath the AFM tip or cantilever um, are used. Other architectures put those positions um, above on the AFM cantilever and tip like we have in the STM. The main mode for tracking uh, how the tip interacts with the surface is by way of a laser. So an incident laser uh, strikes the back reflective side of the cantilever so it's important that this top surface be flat and reflective. And then that is positioned over onto a photodiode um, and the tracking of the position of that received lit reflected light allows us to uh, use that information to map topography and other information from the surface of the sample. So in AFM, the main concept here is that we're using an atomically sharp probe and that this scans across the surface. Um, remind yourself of those old music record players where we have a needle or stylus that's used to register the bumps in a vinyl record and ideas there lend nicely to AFM. Um, 
what the AFM does differently than um, a record player certainly is that the AFM senses intratomic forces between the tip and the sample, and these forces start to present themselves uh, even before the point of contact. And uh, by this mechanism, we can register chemical type maps of the surface if these interactions are uh, repulsive or attractive to the tip by way of intermolecular forces that you might understand from previous lectures or courses. So the capabilities of the technique, uh, we have resolution that approaches uh, the 10 nanometer scale or below in fact. Um, we're able to image samples both in air and even in liquid environments, so directly probing at biological entities in their native and aqueous environments is possible. Um, and like we mentioned a moment ago, we're able to probe non-conductive surfaces, uh, which is in contrast to things like STM. And if you've uh, had lecture materials elsewhere or in this course on scanning electron microscopy, you know that um, coating the sample with uh, metals is necessary to dissipate charge there. So uh, AFM can image non-conducting surfaces and no additional coating is needed. So um, the main function of an AFM, we mentioned that there's a laser and so this is deflected off the back of the cantilever. And so here we see this in an opposite orientation to what we saw a moment ago. Our incident laser is uh, positioned carefully on the back side of the cantilever. Instructors and TAs sometimes refer to the cantilever as a bit of a swimming pool diving board as it uh, will oscillate up and down just like a diving board. So you might put those mental images in your mind as you're learning about the technique. A photo de detector needs to be positioned um, at an appropriate angle away from that reflection um, of laser of laser light so that we can track displacement of that um, laser as the cantilever uh, moves in according to our program on the piezoelectric or according to the topography of the sample or both. Okay, so we'll measure differences in the light intensity at that photo detector and convert this um, into voltage and that'll become a main signal for tracking of the topography of the, the specimen and other, tech, uh, other signals like chemistry of that material. Um, we mentioned that the cantilever um, is based on silicon and <clears throat> it, can be it can be actuated to move in all directions. So in some instruments that a piezoelectric is positioned on the cantilever to position it vertically to uh, carefully bring it into the close contact with the substrate but not um, accelerate it uh, too aggressively into the substrate surface and, and break or damage that tip. And we're going to need um, some careful uh, rastering to be uh, done by way of another piezoelectric material in this diagram, that one registered below the, the substrate. So various architectures have, have put these piezoelectric materials all below um, the substrate, some all above the substrate, or in an architecture that's more common like we have here, a uh, piezoelectric used to bring the cantilever carefully and close to the surface for the z-direction and the x-y dimensions. Um, a, pie a second piezoelectric there used to position this sample carefully. We mentioned that the tip is uh, made by fabrication techniques including um, microfabrication and photolithography often. Um, this allows for the patterning and the etching of silicon or silicon nitride into very sharp point as we see here. Um, there are many different variations and many different suppliers of AFM tips with specialized um, materials, even magnetic tips are available, as well as uh, molecularly functionalized tips as well including some that which, which apply carbon nanotubes um, off, off the tip end there for additional uh, imaging capabilities. Uh, we mentioned the cantilever. Uh, I referred to it as a diving board a moment ago. And that tip, it resides on the bottom of the cantilever. Uh, this cantilever has some requirements. It has to have a low spring constant. So remind yourself of Hooke's law. So that is the proportionality constant 
between displacement and the force to lead to that displacement. So this value of k needs to be very low. Uh, we need the cantilever to be lightweight as well so that we can uh, acquire very high resonant frequencies. So as this cantilever is oscillated by way of that PZT, that piezoelectric material, uh, we will establish a resonant frequency ultimately and um, achieving a high resonant frequency is, is vital to the function of the AFM and uh, we'll need a very lightweight cantilever for this. And uh, the back sided of that cantilever must be reflective so that we can have the laser reflected to the um, photo detector for generation of photovoltage for registry of the topography of the sample. Often, uh, reflective materials can be applied to the back side of the tip, such as aluminum, to assist with the sensitivity of the tracking of the motion of that cantilever via that photo detector. So contact mode is one way to operate an AFM. Contact mode um, relies on repulsive and static uh, interactions between the tip and the surface. In this mode, the AFM tip kind of rides on the sample in close contact with its surface. And the force in the feedback loop uh, tends to be uh, friction-based, and so that is a channel of information available from contact mode. Um, a negative or drawback to this approach is that um, because this force is, is higher than other modes, we tend to end up uh, interacting permanently or deforming the sample surface as we study it. So um, one needs to be uh, cautious when op imaging in contact mode. Contact mode can be useful for actually manipulating surfaces or patterning materials uh, that are soft, and so you can actually use a contact mode approach to write patterns into a surface uh, should your tip and surface be appropriate for that. Non-contact mode is an alternative mode for imaging, and in this case, attractive and dynamic interactions are uh, used. So here, in this case, uh, the AFM tip hovers at some distance away from the surface of the sample, typically 5 to 15 nanometers away. And the force in the feedback loop um, is typically um, a van der Waals type interaction that we register as that tip approaches the surface. So here in this contact mode diagram, we see we have an oscillatory kind of mode for the AFM cantilever and tip uh, is hovering within 5 to 15 nanometers away from the surface. Uh, periodically, van der Waal forces will um, modulate that interaction between the surface and that cantilever tip, and this allows for a channel of information for imaging. The applied force um, between the cantilever and the surface ends up dependent on that height value, the, the distance between uh, the cantilever tip and the surface, and uh, we can also register changes in the cantilever oscillation as that force manipulates the pattern of the sinusoidal type curve that we uh, use to track the positioning of that cantilever. Tapping mode is another um, option for driving the AFM instrument. And here, tapping mode relies on repulsive interactions and is also a dynamic um, kind of mode. So in this case, similar to the non-contact above, the AFM tip uh, ends up kind of tapping the surface as it maps the z-coordinate. Um, we end up <clears throat> not only registering the information that we have in non-contact mode during the moments where we are um, within the 5 to 50 nanometer distance from the surface, but we also benefit by getting a, a moment of contact between the tip and the surface to give us information that is um, alike to what we have in contact mode above. Because we only contact briefly and uh, semi-frequently across the, a surface area of interest, we're able to get um, surface topography as we kind of map out the vertical dimension here by tracking the laser displacement. So this mode eliminates uh, lateral forces or hysteresis due to the tip dragging or sticking across the sample because we sort of tap and only momentarily interact with that surface. And 
um, with all this, we end up um, in, in a mode that's even less likely to damage the sample than the contact mode. So tapping mode is often uh, a method of choice as one in starts to um, investigate a new surface and um, can register a lot of different channels of information owing to both non-contact moments as well as brief contact moments for the imaging. So to give you a bit of a visual here for how this works, we have this uh, animated PowerPoint slide. So here's our contact angle, um, our AFM instrument uh, showing an incident laser off the backside going to a photo detector. And here's sort of a view of that detector. And you can see that as the tip is forced to move over top some topographic detail, that uh, that laser is going to move in response to that. Okay, so we use the photo detector again to measure the change in the optical beam position or to even register um, differences in the oscillatory pattern, which can be large to small or small to large as we move over uh, topography on a sample surface. Okay, so just to clean this up here, In contact mode, we see that AFM measures repulsion between the tip and the sample. The force of the tip against the sample tends to uh, be set as a constant. There's a feedback mechanism used to keep the cantilever deflection, um, and we register that uh, as a constant force by programming the AFM instrument and software. And the voltage required to reposition the tip um, correlates to the height of the sample and ultimately gives us the um, topographic information in the z-direction. Um, as we've said earlier, this channel, this approach is complicated by excess of tracking forces applied between the probe and the sample and it can be a, regarded as a destructive imaging technique. Um, tapping mode on the other hand, we have a oscillating cantilever in free air and the amplitude um, is larger than the sort of set point. As the tip interacts with the surface, we end up tapping on that surface and the cantilever oscillates at, a set, at, at the expected um, set point amplitude there. Um, when the tip encounters a particle or something of higher topography, the cantilever oscillation amplitude will drop uh, given the adjusted range that it'll have due to the topography of that particle or feature. And we register this as an, a channel of information. Um, a feedback can uh, therefore um, uh, register, and this will adjust the, the Z direction of the piezoelectric to position the whole cantilever at a higher point. Um, and this amplitude would return to its original position and this would give us um, information of the topography. So in short, if we are tracking you know, with time the motion of the AFM tip at the early stages, uh, we might have an oscillatory pattern with time like this. So this would be the actual Z direction of the cantilever. And then as we start to interact with the surface, we'd expect that this pattern may adjust. So we could have less amplitude as well as less frequency as we start to interact with the surface. And then if we get into an area of adjusted topography or a particle is present, then that pattern would adjust even further. And all of the motions of the cantilever are registered by way of the laser off the back of the cantilever and this allows us to kind of map and understand the pattern of the cantilever in real time and uh, make adjustments in the Z piezoelectric as well as um, adjusting and acquiring information for topography at the same time. Okay so in the diagram here we see that um, we've got a piezoelectric um, 
for the z-direction with the piezoelectric for the xy-direction, and both of these are controlled by the AFM uh, controller, which is here a Brooker-type uh, model, and so that z parameter to help make the final adjustment of the cantilever position as we register uh, additional topography here, you can see here now is below the sample and we would actually adjust the, the sample proximity to the tip using that piezoelectric material. And to generate the sort of XY plane of information, we would use the second piezoelectric below to move the sample back and forth for imaging. Okay, um, so to emphasize that AFM tapping mode measures attractive forces between the tip and the sample, uh, hydrogen bonding, van der Waal forces, uh, electrostatic forces, magnetic, all can be attractive forces that would uh, be registered under this technique. Um, we have very little contact with the sample, so uh, a non-destructive imaging technique. Um, we can image semiconducting and polymeric materials that are non-conducting as well as conducting. So a more uh, universal imaging technique is had here relative to STM. And uh, we, we mentioned that this is regarded as a non-destructive or um, imaging technique that does not damage the sample. Um, a lot of applications have evolved based on the AFM instrument. Um, not only is imaging of nanostructures possible, but actual uh, indentation of surfaces and the study of the sort of mechanical properties at the nanometer scale at a surface um, have, been, have been done. Um, not only that, uh, kind of like a quill and ink um, for writing, where one were to dip uh, a feather into ink and write just like we used to in olden, olden times, uh, we can do that with the AFM. So we can kind of ink the surface with molecules and allow those molecules to transfer onto a surface and um, sort of write molecular patterns this way using the AFM technique. Not only that, we can actually um, kind of use the AFM to manipulate nanoparticles and build uh, a complex nanostructures by uh, repositioning features on a surface um, to build up uh, you know, complex patterns of nanomaterials, as you see here. So in our lab, what we'll do is use the atomic force microscope to understand the topography of um, materials from our compact disc. So our master and uh, polycarbonate can be considered in that regard. Um, so here is the AFM image of the polycarbonate that has been uh, relieved from the sandwich structure that is in the cross section of a compact disc. And you can see here that the sort of parallel trenches and valleys um, that allow for the positioning of data or information uh, can be tracked with the AFM. Not only that, the data bits that we see written to the compact disk are also um, in view in this AFM image. We've acquired an image with the piezoelectric for the X and Y directions here that is 10 microns by 10 microns. And uh, a Z direction for registering the height acquired through tapping mode AFM, shows that much of this topography is on the order of 100 to 200 nanometers on the vertical scale here. So uh, we'll use the AFM to uh, acquire uh, images of the polycarbonate master that was once in contact uh, with our aluminum and acrylic. We'll also study the aluminum layer and then uh, use AFM to study the silicone grating that is made by uh, casting over top of the master shown here on this 